Hello and welcome to Money 2020 Hindsight, your cheat sheet for the least you need to know in fintech today. I'm Nick Holland, Global Head of Research at Money 2020. Today we're going to discuss Klarna's valuation reset, Delta's new metal card and the money shot. Pew, pew. Um, so let's start as always doing first though with um, the number of the day. We'll go with uh, my friend and guest here, Nikki Testfire. Mickey, over to you mate. What's the number of the day? Nick, uh, how are you doing? So my number of the day today is $6.5 billion. So it's weighty. Hang on, is it that? Yes, it is. It's $6.5 billion. That's, that's a big figure, but it used to be bigger, right? Exactly, and, and that's why we picked it for the number of today, uh, the day. Uh, so that number is the new valuation at which Klarna is raising $600 million. And, you know, it's particularly notable because back in its last raise, which was about a year ago, Klarna was valued at $46 billion. So this suggests it's going to be having a down round uh, with $30 billion, sorry, $40 billion wiped off its market cap, which is an extraordinary fall from base, you could say. Yeah. Um, is, is your, did you just refer to a $40 billion haircut as a down round? Yeah, maybe oh. I should. I mean, you're, let, not, let me, you're not wrong. Let me first you're not wrong. Let me, Hang on a second, but let me introduce a guest to number two. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> preempted my introduction considerably. Zach Anderson Pettit, welcome to uh, the hindsight. <laughs> thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you, but, Mickey. But thank of course, you for having I, me as I well. Gonna, I was going to introduce you, but I, I, I know you're very feisty and hot, hot to trot. No, uh, apologies for interrupting. I was keeping it together as much as I could, but $40 Mate, billion. I, they just accidentally added $40 billion to the valuation. So, you know, here, here we are. Here we are. It, anyway, that's, that's, that's where we're at. I think this is a general reset going on overall. We're going to the sort of the sanity check post the last couple of years. So, you know, it, it seems like a much more realistic valuation to me. I mean, Mickey, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, thank you, Zach, for calling me out that you are right. I mean, technically, <laughs> I was, it was, it is a down round, but yeah, it's maybe not, it's, it's more like a free fall rather than a down round. And yeah, I think, Nick, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, I think it's, I mean, I think there are a couple of factors at play here. I do think BNPR is getting hit because the business model is, particularly open to challenges we see right now to do with interest rates yeah. but also there is the big you know elephant in the room which is around valuations and definitely i think this reset in valuations is uh, probably justified to be honest with you excellent uh zach any final comments for you before we move on to the next segment no, I just I think it's going to be really interesting to watch it develop. And I, as much as we joke about it, I think this is like the moment to actually have a heart and be paying attention to what's going on in the market. And, you know, if you have friends at Klarna, like try and help them land in a good place. If you have yeah, friends at Coinbase, try and, you know. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of that out there, actually. Which I yeah. think it's, it's good that the, the fintech community is helping each other out. You know, it, it's clearly, uh, you know, there's been a lot of layoffs recently and hopefully those people find new homes quickly. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's sad that that's happened, but again, this yeah. is almost inevitable given how overheated things have been. Um, anyway, moving on quickly, I've, I've got a piece that I found the other day, which is about, uh, Delta Airlines bringing out a new metal card that's made from recycled aircraft material. Uh, this limited edition version of Delta SkyMiles Reserve and Reserve Business American Express card contains 25% metal from a retired 747 jumbo jet Delta ship 6307 and comes with a welcome kit that enables holders to access an augmented reality experience about the aircraft's history and the manufacturing <laughs> card. I know. Uh, so it's, 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 it's made from 20, this is important, this is made from 25% airline aircraft material, has layers of polymer print, polymer print to protect the aluminum, I got the word spelled right, I've actually transitioned to American, uh, and well, as well as the <laughs> antenna that enables contactless payments. Uh, Delta is accepting applications for this card until the 3rd of August while supplies last. So it's not just, I mean, um, we've been working on, we've been working on a report about ESG recently and sort of the immense impact that is still in the industry from just just all manner of things but i think one area that we can really cut out potentially is plastic cards so that's great you know there's you know the plastic cards last 400 years uh in in terms of landfills not sure metals any better uh, but i'm just just wondering why 
do we still need cards? It's been, you know, this is something I've been working on for about 20 years, looking at NFT technology and how we can maybe get rid of cards. If you look at like the, the turn of the, the century, you know, AOL was churning out CD-ROMs. We still have Netflix DVDs, but they saw the lights and went purely digital. So why do we still need cards? I mean, what what is the reason for cards still? So I'll go with Zachary first, please. Yeah, I've, what is the reason for cards still? I think humans are irrational and like to have a thing in their pocket. And if that thing in their pocket is heavier and cooler than the person sitting next to them, then they can feel <laughs> especially special about that thing. So what my, my takeaway from all this, though, isn't even like, what's the point of cards? My takeaway is that actually, I haven't had a chance to tell the powers to be a Money 2020 this yet, but I'm actually going to step away from Money 2020, um, develop, I'm going to open a fund and we're going to dive to the Titanic. And we are going to take pieces of the Titanic and we are going to turn it into contactless cards because the Titanic card doesn't exist yet. And this is an opportunity. So that's the big thing for me is that this is an announcement, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think the fact that Titanic exists and if you turn it into a metal card shows that the card isn't going to biodegrade that well. So, but there's, other than that, you, you, so you, you kind of called me out on this a little bit because again, it's totally irrational. I was just telling you before this, but. I opened a Chime account last year. I was desperate to get the metal card. I had to do, I think it was 50 transactions in 90 days. And I don't know why. I just, no reason. I just wanted a metal card, which has, there's no reason to it. It's heavier. You know, it's, it's something more that fills up my wallet, takes up more wallet space, makes a nice clunky sound when I drop it. I don't know why I wanted one. But again, I think whoever's in card marketing really understands um the mindset of the, the you know American slash English consumer and is, is you know prepared to put these things in the market. I think there's there's still clearly that angle for that little real estate within a wallet where where cards and card issuers can still uh, you know control the branding. It's not like an app in a phone or whatever. Mickey, over to you. Yeah. Now. No, I, mean, I think both of you make a good point, but I do have to kind of I do see a flip side to this, right? And I think. One of the, the points you made with AOL and Netflix is that those services didn't have to be, they didn't, everyone didn't need them, right? But the financial services, everybody does need them. So it's really important right. that, you know, people aren't left behind, right? So that's one big thing. I think the second thing for me, though, is also just, you know, how many times does your phone run out of battery, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And do you want to be caught in a, you know, a situation where you're stressing about, oh, I, only, I only have 10% battery, am I going to be able to make it home, for example? So I think there are actually very realistic and realist kind of yeah. reasons for this. And sorry to, to, to harp on about this, but the last point I'd make is for, for from a, a, an issuer side, I think it offers great marketing. So in the UK, for example, Monzo became what it became, not out of any marketing scheme, but because they had these very, um, you know, noticeable coral orange cards and that's how I discovered about Monzo. And I think that's also one of the reasons why, you know, they're still yeah. pushing. It. it is true. It's one of the few bits of real estate you can really control still within, you know, someone's personal effects. I think, as you say, as it goes digital, it goes away. I, I, just, I just wonder though as well. I mean, it's like, I think there's the argument about inclusivity, but it's, it's, I think there's probably at this point, you know, the vast majority of cell phones do have NFC technology, can do contactless. So it's not, I think that's almost a moot point. It's not like, it's not like cash being, you know, done away with. You're just moving from one form factor to another. But I do get the, uh, obviously, the, the the digital, the the, the battery issue, um, particularly for my girlfriend whose car, phone is always at two percent. It drives me absolutely <laughs> mental. But they, so anyway, um, any final thoughts on this before we move on to the money shot? Pew pew. Keep the car. Very important. Keep the car. <laughs> I think a very important one. Have you guys seen that, like, uh, the, like, little viral, I don't even know what you call them, just, like, when, like, little terms go viral, you know, the, like, the, my toxic trait is one. Have you seen that uh -huh. at all? Yeah, I think Nick's toxic trait is that he, what, what was it you said you did, Nick, for time, you had to do 90 transactions in 50 days. I feel like that's your, like, male toxic trait was you, for no specific reason, just to get a metal card, spent 18 cents at 50 different gas stations in 90 you days or something like that you would not believe how happy i was when this card turned up as well again i think it's like it's, it's almost like i guess the, the pandemic's done this to me the, the crap that i've bought on amazon and you're like it's, it's you know i guess it's the you know the the um the little 
like rush of adrenaline when you get something new in the mail. So every day's Christmas, but certainly a little yeah. metal card really made me happy for about two minutes. And maybe just maybe humans are irrational about financial endeavors, potentially. Yeah, I think they're in lies. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. We've got a few minutes left. Let's talk about um, the money shot, pew, 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 which is uh, Zach. Let's talk about our, our trip to Amsterdam. And uh, Mickey was there as well. But let's have a little chat about I think one of the spicier sessions there was with OnlyFans. So we had, we had them on a couple of stages. Um, but I think the, the more intimate one was your interview uh, in the exchange, which was the stage that I was managing. So, Zach, maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it was, it was a, I think it, the way that OnlyFans handled Money 2020 Amsterdam or Money 2020 Europe, I should say, one was a masterclass in PR, like the work that they did to get, I mean, th there was more written about them, I think, than probably any other, any other specific company. And granted, OnlyFans has done an amazing job of being that brand that has that a lot of people have questions about and a lot of people have assumptions about. So they're in a very good position to come out and say anything and it's going to be news. So it was really cool to see them kind of not only like leverage kind of like their PR mechanism, and I'll actually get to the conversation we had, but to see them, to see them actually come to Money 2020 for a reason, right? Not to yeah. just do it for the PR stunt, but they were like very clear about the fact that they were there to meet with bankers, to make sure that they were on the same page with the right yeah. merchant processors to, you know, like all of these things that we talk about and we know happen in Money 2020, but like, it's just, it doesn't happen on stage, right? It happens behind yeah. closed doors, but these, it's so important that that should happen. So it was really cool to get Lee, uh, Lee, the CFO of OnlyFans was who I interviewed uh, on the exchange. And like the interview on the exchange was really cool and had a, quite an experience and I learned a lot, but it was even more interesting to get his like behind the scenes, behind the scenes perspective yeah. while we were like, and because the exchange is like the for those listening, it's the yeah. off the record stage that we did in Amsterdam. So you had to like go through this whole thing and like had to put your phone in a yonder pouch and you weren't allowed to, you know, share until you got out. And, and I'll mention uh, as well, is, is the actually the only session where I had to actually play bouncer and throw some journalists out. So it was, you know, it, uh, people wanted to be in this session, but it, it was it was very exclusive, a little off the record, actually very off the record. That was how it was designed. But uh yeah. Yeah. So it was, we were in the green room. We were in the like most off the record place, I think, in Amsterdam, which is the green room of the off the of the exchange. Uh, and he was just kind of telling me, you know, some little pieces of like meetings they'd had and conversations they'd had and the way that they had kind of uh, just leveraged the leveraged the opportunity to be kind of uh, put like put on their adult pants to some degree. It was really yeah. interesting. And then I think the the most interesting pieces of the actual conversation. Um, and I don't want to share too many details of it because it was off the record. But uh, I think the most interesting story he told was that that like four day period between no more adult content and eh, we're oh going to keep going God. with it. Absolutely. You know? I mean, that, how terrifying is that for a company that is absolutely reliant on digital transactions to have banks just pull the plug, just pull the rug straight out from under their feet? I mean, just 100 percent. Yeah. And which is even more why because like the other thing that was a really clear takeaway for me was that their their KYC process is stronger than most of the banks that we work with and most of the banks we talk yeah. about, right? So that like it really is, it seems to truly be the safest social media they, platform they, that one uh, could be on. They are ahead of the game using they're currently using yeah. Yoti's facial biometric age assurance technology to make sure that people they're actually you know analyzing people's faces to check that they're adults. It's it's about as sophisticated yeah. as you get right now. Yeah, Very and cool. like actually have to prove that you're, you know, I mean, I think there's probably a way that you could deep fake that, right? But the fact that you have to well, prove that you have a social media, like ab all absolutely. I mean, there's, there's ways to get around anything, but it's, it's yeah. how much friction do you have to get through exactly. to get to the end point. So I think they, they certainly have, have gated enough to make it, you know, prohibitive for amateurs, I'd say. Um, Let's talk about exchange a little bit as well. I just want to mention, I mean, it, so I was managing the exchange for a couple of days and Zach mentioned the, the yonder pouches. It was not only, again, a stage within an enigma within a, you know, it was kind of a Russian doll type thing. So it was, you, you sort of go through this freak show into this trailer, you know, just a tunnel of made out of trailer containers uh, with, with red lights and then into a, a mission control room. And then you escorted into a room with pulsing red lights, which was, 
to some a little bit <laughs> disturbing first thing in the morning. So there's a lot of cognitive dissonance going on. It's a real experience. And then you get in there and you're told, right, okay, so um, you've got to put your phone away for 25 minutes. And there's a sort of sociological experiment. Getting people to put their phone away for 25 minutes and not touch it was just staggeringly difficult in some respects. You know, people, we found the under pouches of people have physically ripped open because they couldn't handle it or they had to walk out of the room. And, you know, some were visibly sort of twitchy. It was like, you know, they're, they're not yeah. coffee or anything. It was bizarre, but also, you know, uh, they started to get it towards the end. But it did, I mean, it did make for a very candid dialogue, but it was definitely um, just, I mean, seeing actual addiction to electronics was, it was a little bit, disturbing in, in sort of real time you know any thoughts on that mickey you were in the exchange for a few sessions right i mean yeah what was yours like mickey i mean i managed to sneak in red and as a journalist i thought i couldn't go there because you know i thought like me and my people <laughs> yeah, 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 but you're our journalist mate so it's all right <laughs> I, just, I, I had to stick a stick with the union for a while, but you know my phone <laughs> the whole time. I, yeah, I, you know it was it was actually great, and I think everything you said, I, I experienced the, the FOMO. Of, uh, it's not the FOMO, sorry, but people's addictions to their phones. There was a couple of times where just they couldn't resist the, like looking at their phones, but trying to find. And I just thought that well, that's amazing, uh, and you know it's amazing because you mock the, the the bank cards, but you, you know you've seen how people are addicted to little bits of things in their pocket. And and I, I think it just made for a great session in term in general because you know like I, I I only managed to attend a couple of them right at the end but they were so candid and they were so you know like quite a lot of fun actually it wasn't yeah. very people were very open and, and willing to discuss things perhaps you wouldn't want to on a big stage or, that, or one yeah I mean there, there were some contractual obligations that made sure we we couldn't you know phones and electronic devices and everything had to be cut off there was some sort of financial shared by some companies there but also it did make for much more candid and upfront and frank conversations I thought which was great so hopefully we'll replicate something like that in Las Vegas coming up Zachary we will indeed we will indeed and I mean I think the other thing about it is I mean, I, I don't know, maybe I'm too bullish on this whole off the record thing, but it, it's kind of the job of comms and PR people to make these conversations that are on the record less interesting than they could potentially be. And if we, yeah. as, as, a, as a, not just Money 2020, but I hope the whole industry kind of adopts this as a thing, because this, this is the way that actual conversations happen. And it's yeah. also the way that the, the, the audience stays engaged. This is the Absolutely. other thing. Like, yes. They're not tweeting, but also they're actually listening. So no, I hope this is something that like yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there was that, but also I mean, again, as you say, it, there was there was no sort of you know there, there was no sort of boilerplate marketing sort of nonsense. It tends to be real candid conversations for people who were decision makers, rather than you getting you know the sales pitch about something. Yeah. So it was just makes for a far more intimate conversation in a lot of respects. Anyway, time's up. Uh, Zach, uh, wonderful having you on there, Zach Anderson Pettit, who uh, is masterminding the upcoming Las Vegas show. So Zach will be back on here soon. Uh, also, always a uh, great pleasure to have Mickey Testifier on. Mickey, thank you, sir. And um, myself, Nick Holland, um, I will be back here shortly with uh, another episode of Hindsight. So in the meantime, thank you very much. Take care. Bye for now.